last time we talked about uh, Thailand case. So we said we were going to discuss a little bit more about that today. So in the early 90s in Thailand, we had financial liberalization. So what does that mean in easy English, financial liberalization? What happened in Thailand in the early 90s? Open the economy, right? Open the economy to investment. To foreign investments. So what happened? Thai banks and people took a lot of loans in US dollars, right? loans from abroad to buy hotels and houses. The house price is going up in Thailand. Okay, everybody's buying houses. Where are they getting the money to buy the house? They're getting loans from another from abroad, right? They're using this loan, 34 billion dollars, goes into the property market. What's the, what, could, what problem could you see here with a lot of foreign investment in the Thai economy and a lot of money going into the property market? What's a possible problem? The price of real estate going for So we had a bubble, a real estate bubble. Yeah. What usually causes the bubble to burst? Do you understand bubble? What causes the bubble to burst, usually? Hmm? What's that? Inflation. What does inflation cause the central bank to do? Inflation. What is the central bank going to do if there's high inflation? Right. So the increase of the raise interest rate. So if you raise the interest rate, what happens? Do people take out more loans or less loans? Is it harder to pay back their loan or easier to pay back their loan? Right, so people can start defaulting on their loans, right? We saw this in the US, also in the real estate crisis in the US and the UK, right? Then the bubble burst, so the the banks, people and banks can't repay their loans, right? The bank is going bankrupt. We have some banks which we saw was going out of business. Okay. So, Finance One was a big bank that went out of business. Okay. So, for example, Finance One is a big bank in China. Finance One collapsed. Then we can say that uh, Thailand has a problem. So the foreign investors start to take out their money. Okay, they, they withdraw their money. From where? 
from stocks and property, right? So on. Okay, for example, from stocks, we can see the stock market is going down. Also, loans, they don't give the loans anymore, right? Bonds are very expensive. If a company wants to lend money from bonds, the interest rate is much higher for the company to lend money. Okay. So this is the problem that we have at the moment. So we have to make a decision. Okay, we have the problem with the balance of payments, right? We have a current account deficit for a long time, right? And we also have, now we have a capital account deficit. Before we had capital account surplus, which was paying for paying for our uh, current account deficit, right? So decision. Keep a fixed exchange rate or weaken the exchange rate. Do you understand to keep the exchange rate fixed? Like keeping this fixed against the dollar or make our exchange rate weaker. Okay? So here we have weakened the exchange rate. Okay, and here we have keep the fixed exchange rate. That's our decision. So we'll just write what's the discuss with your partner. What do you think is the advantage of weakening the exchange rate, making the exchange rate weaker? What would be the advantage? Right? Let's say it's going to weaken by 30%. Or what's the advantage of keeping the exchange rate the same as it is now? So discuss with your partner. Which one are you going to do and why? First discuss the advantages of each of these, right? So clearly the advantage of weakening is disadvantage of keeping, right? I'm 
Okay, so then think about the question, what will happen? What do you think will happen if we weaken the exchange rate? What will happen if we keep the exchange rate? Decide what you're going to do. We weaken or keep the same. You sang ho. You sang ho. What will happen if they weaken the exchange rate? Exporting price become competitive. Exports get more competitive. Yes. In the short run or in the long run? Long, long run. What did we study in the class? What effect does the... Right? In the long term? In the short term they might have... Our part of deficit might get, get worse, right? We saw the J-curve effect. Yes, and any other effect? In the longer term, the, so the long term, this will improve the current account deficit. Yeah. Okay. Any other effect from weakening the exchange rate? Yes. If they uh, make the currency weaker, uh, um, we foreign investors will not be interested in investing to uh, Okay, so foreign investors will will lose will lose some money, right? Yeah. The, the, so foreign investors are taking out their money because they're afraid of this, right? So foreign investors already invested in Thailand, in Thailand will lose money. What does that do for Thailand's reputation? Does that improve Thailand's reputation or disprove? Disprove. So it will damage Thailand's reputation. So investors will be slower to invest in Thailand, right? So I invested in stocks in Thailand or real estate and then I want to change my money back to my own currency. The currency got 30% weaker, then I'm going to lose 30% of my money. Any other effect of making the currency weaker? You poor investor invest higher. They will invest more. Uh, you. you can attract FDI, right? So you can attract uh, FDI in, in Thailand, right? Because the land is cheaper. Maybe we had a property bubble. Okay? So if I want to set up a factory in China, Thailand, it's now cheaper to start a factory in Thailand. Okay, any other point here? So prudent or polygon loan yes. becomes bigger. Yes. So what about these people? They took loans in dollars. They owe the money in dollars, right? Especially the banks. The banks probably took the loans in dollars and lent to the people in Thai Bat. Okay? So banks Banks have big trouble. Why? They they borrowed in dollars and they lent in baht. So now, can they ask the people they lent to to pay them back more baht? 
Say I lent somebody 200,000 baht. Okay? And I say to them, well, I, I know I gave you a loan of 200,000 baht, but actually the baht is now weaker against the dollar. So now I want you to pay me back 300,000 baht. What are you going to say? Is that legal? Can the bank do that? Hmm? It's illegal, right? Can't change. The bank already made the contract with you. They can't say, now give me more back, right? But the problem for the bad bank is this 200,000 baht is not going to pay back the dollars that they borrowed. Okay? Do you understand that problem? So that's a problem for Greece. Now, if Greece wants to leave the euro, they have a lot of debts in euros. Okay? If they change to the drachma and devalue the drachma by 50%, their, euro, their debts are still in euros. Their debts didn't change, right? So some people suggest that Greece changed their debt from euros to drachma, which is basically defaulting on their debt, right? Which it would be probably the more likely thing. So what's going to happen here? Can the bank repay the money they borrowed in US dollars? No. So the bank, the bank, like Capital One, the bank can go bankrupt. And the foreign, foreign lenders, do they get their money back? No, they don't, right? Foreign lenders don't get their money back. What happens to Thailand's reputation? Are you going to lend money to Thailand banks again no. in the future? No. So damage Thailand's reputation, right? In different ways. Okay, so they, what about if we keep the exchange rate? What will happen? So it's kind of the opposite of these things, right? We won't improve our exports, okay? Foreign investors will keep their money. We can improve our reputation, keep our reputation, right? The banks are going to have less trouble. So if you're an exporter, what would you want to do? Weaken the currency or keep the currency? If you're a banker, what would you prefer to do? Weaken the currency or keep the currency? Okay, so you can see even inside the country you have some conflict between the people. If you're unemployed, which would you prefer to do? Weaken the currency or keep the currency? If you have no job, you're unemployed, which would you prefer? Weaken the currency. If you're a pensioner, what would you prefer to do? Keep the currency, right? If you weaken the currency, your savings is, is going to be used up, right? So we have this kind of conflict at the moment in Greece, right? Between the pensioners and the unemployed. Pensioners want to keep in the euro. Unemployed want to leave, maybe want to leave the euro, right? Between the banks. Banks want to stay in the euro. Exporters. Exporters or tourism industry. If you're working in the tourism industry in Thailand, do you want to weaken the currency or keep the currency? We can the currency, right? People will go on holidays and you'll get more business. You still have to pay back to the bank the same amount of VAT for the loan for your hotel that you built, right? So just you'll get more customers. The problem will be the bank. The bank won't have enough VAT to buy the dollars, right? So uh, then you, you have to make a decision. So discuss with your partner just one last time now that we've discussed it. What are you going to do? Weaken the currency or keep the currency? Now that we looked at the options. That is the decision you have to make. You are the Minister of Finance in Thailand. Okay, let's have a show of hands. Who's going to weaken the currency? Let the currency weaken. Who's going to keep the currency at the same level? Okay, not everybody put up their hand. Everybody has to put up their hands. Choose one. Weaken the currency. Keep the currency at the same level. Okay, so some people have different opinions, right? So does anybody know what happened in the end in Thailand? 
I know. What happened in the end? Does anybody know? I know. The IMF arrived? Why? Um, their, their bank loan is very high. Mm -hmm. We can put another one here. The country also, right? The country, banks, big trouble to pay back the dollars. The country also has a problem to pay back the dollars. Okay? They, they got loans too, right? So the government, they have big trouble to borrow and pay back, right? So in the end, uh, Ireland, they tried to keep the exchange rate, but what happened was they ran out of reserves. They were using their reserves to keep the exchange rate, okay? By buying their own currency with the foreign currency and the reserves. So once they run out of reserves, they had no choice left, okay? They were forced out of the fixed exchange rate. Their currency weakened a lot, maybe more than 30%, maybe 50 or 60%, okay? So because their currency weakened, they had a lot of bank bankruptcy, okay? And also the country couldn't pay back the loan. So the IMF came in to give the cheap loans. Okay? If we can't lend money, nobody wants to lend to us because we lose our reputation. Nobody wants to lend money to us. What can we do? Who are we going to call? Batman? Hmm? Nobody wants to lend money to us. They don't. We lost our reputation. Who are we going to call? Yeah. IMF. What's the IMF going to do? Give loans at 3% or 4%, right? What's the condition? Whatever the IMF wants, right? IMF decides the conditions. Usually the IMF is going to ask them to do more financial liberalization. Okay? So the IMF agreed with the weaker currency in Thailand. Okay? And the IMF made some conditions in on Thailand. Okay? Then uh, a few years later, Thailand started to have current account surplus. Okay? They improved their exports, improved their tourism, changed to a current account surplus, the IMF was happy. Okay? Usually that's the IMF prescription. We need to make a current account surplus, improve our exports, okay? and by making a current account surplus, uh, we can recover and people will lend money to us again in the market. So, Thailand changed their exchange rate from a fixed exchange rate to a floating exchange rate. It was quite painful, but it, uh, in the longer term, they managed to make current account surplus. So, do you have any question about this case? Can you see the problem in the balance of payments here? If, we have, if they have a current account deficit and a capital account deficit, it's a problem, right? They need, in the fixed exchange rate, they need to use their reserves, their dollars, gold, and so on, to buy, buy their own currency. Then eventually, their reserve goes down to zero. Then uh, they don't have any reserves. Their only choice really is to get loans from the IMF. Okay. Yes? If Thailand uh, had weakening currency earlier, mm -hmm. Thailand have, could have uh, currency They could have avoided a small, a small economic currency smaller than smaller than smaller than you know uh, than now. Yes, so ten percent or fifteen percent. If they had done that earlier. Yeah. What do you think would have happened? Crisis is quite painful, right? Yeah. Crisis caused a lot of problems, the country to go backwards a little bit. So if they could have avoided the crisis by organizing and managing 
leaving the fixed exchange rate earlier, maybe they could have had less damage, could have been better in the long term, right? So this crisis, also we had contagion problem from Thailand, spread to Malaysia, and uh, on to Korea. Korea, other Asian countries had a, if we look at them, a quite similar story, right? The same for Korea. They financial liberalization opened their economy to foreign investors a lot of loans in dollars, especially the companies in Korea, the Chaebol, Chaebol <coughs> had a very high debt, right? Companies in Korea had very high debt. So when they had the inflation and raising the interest rate, then the economy in Korea started to have some problems, but if the companies couldn't repay their loans, banks couldn't repay their loans, started to go bankrupt, okay? Foreign lenders panicked, thought it's going to be the same as Thailand took their money out of Korea. Okay. Nobody wanted to lend money to Korea. And uh, Korea also, at one stage, their exchange rate went from $1 was 1,001 to $1 is 2,001, right? During the crisis, weakened a lot. So, any more questions about this case? In this situation, other new investor Invest more Thailand. What do you mean? Uh, in America or European investor, make mm -hmm. they they invest more Thailand in this situation. What do you mean invest more? Uh, in weakening the currency. After the currency is weakened. <coughs> well, you see, yes, they could invest in. Thailand again, but because they got burnt, maybe they got burnt, you understand to get burnt, they might be angry, or a little bit slow, or Thailand lost their reputation, they don't, maybe they don't want, but some investors will invest in Tha Thailand, some investors go around during crises looking for good value, and they will buy up, so for example in the US crisis or the European crisis, some Ch especially Chinese, Chinese government fund, was looking for some good deals, right? Buying some uh, stock in some companies, the stock price was very low, right? That kind of thing. So, yes, the investors can find some good value, but you have to be careful because if the company goes bankrupt, it's risky, right? If the company goes bankrupt, you're going to lose your investment, lose your money, but then the company could recover. So you have to decide which company to invest in, right? For example, let's say it's a hotel in Thailand. Okay, you could, here the hotel is really expensive, right? But after the crisis, the price of the hotel is going to go down a lot. So you might say, I'm going to buy a hotel in Thailand, okay? It only costs 100,000 US dollars. It used to cost 300,000 US dollars. So I think Thailand's economy will improve. So I will buy the hotel and hope to get good business. But if you're a foreign investor, you have to remember that the Thai bad is now weaker. So even though you make profits on the hotel, when you change those profits back to your currency, you're going to get less of your currency because it's a weaker Thai bad. Right? So, <coughs> any more questions? Yes? What if uh, Thai government makes, um, makes policies to restrict blacklist? Uh, openings of foreign money inflow yes. for financial liberalization. Yes, so like that, same, same that's one lesson they learned from the crisis, capital control. So yeah. when Thailand were starting to have this problem again in 2006, <coughs> 2005, 2006, they were getting another real estate bubble, right? In Korea you also had kind of real estate bubble in 2005 and 2006. Yeah. So Thailand started to do some capital controls this time, right? So that's a good point. Okay, do you understand capital controls? He said this is restrict, restrict the, the foreign investment. Okay, if we have a bubble situation, or it looks like we're going to have a bubble situation, we can restrict it to foreign investment. How can we restrict the foreign investment? What kind of capital control could we do? So we set some limits, right? Yeah. Often what they do is you have to deposit, you have to make a deposit. 
Right? If you want to invest in Thailand, you need to make a deposit uh, in the, you know, like for one year, let's say of 10% or 20% of the value. Okay? So you have to leave that money, you can't touch it for one year. Okay? So you have to deposit that money in the bank. Okay? That kind of thing. Or just uh, <coughs> other regulations, they can make a regulation about foreign ownership, right? Like the foreign owner is not allowed to own property or the foreign person has to join with the local person together. They have to make a joint venture, right? In China, they have this kind of regulations, okay? Usually you have to buy together with the Chinese person, right? You can't just buy the land by yourself, okay? You need to have... So a lot of companies do the joint venture in China, okay? So the IMF doesn't like that kind of thing, right? They want the liberalization. But we also saw this in Brazil. Brazil also did some capital controls a few years ago because there was a lot of money going to Brazil when the US made a low, very low interest rate and QE, printing the money. Do you think all of those dollars stayed in the US? No. <coughs> oh, right? The interest rate in the US was very low. So just like in Thailand's case, the interest rate in Japan was very low. So Japanese investors want to invest in Thailand. So US investors wanted to invest in Brazil. So the Brazilian government complained about that. They said, you're going to cause a bubble in Brazil with all these dollars coming into Brazil. So Brazilian government put this kind of restriction on the foreign investment. If I want to invest in Brazil, I need to deposit some money in an account. Right? For one year or two years or three years. So just those kind of things helps to slow the investment a little bit. So we don't get uh, that big of a bubble. Okay, so good point about uh, if they had made capital controls, it might have helped. So are you going to blame the IMF? <laughs> Is the IMF perfect? No. So if you listen to Joseph Stiglitz, who won the Nobel Price, he says about the IMF economists that they are the uh, poor, poor a C-grade student from the good university. So he says the A-grade student is, is working in the, you know, he's like him, Nobel Prize winner, or working in the top university, right? But the students who got the C-grade in Harvard or MIT, they go to work for the IMF, right? That's what he said. <laughs> so he thinks that he disagrees with some things the IMF do, right? Also, the IMF has another problem which ha is, it is, uh, unfortunately, has some political influence. It's not supposed to have political influence, but the president of the IMF is always from Europe, and number two from the US. So the politicians from, from the US or Europe can have influence on the, on the uh, IMF. So anyway, they're just humans. Humans make mistakes, right? So it's easier to see in hindsight uh, what what uh, they could have done. Okay. But uh, you know the problem with bubbles, it's a psychological problem we talked about with expectations that's been happening for hundreds of years. Okay. Uh, every We'll talk about business cycles later, but there's always some growth and then, right, not as fast growth, and then growth, and then maybe recession and growth. But the problem is people's psychology we talked about herding and animal spirits. So when the times are good, people don't want to think here. People don't want to think there's going to be a problem, right? Everybody's happy, the prices are going up, everybody's doing well. So they just think, this is going to go on forever. We'll never stop, right? So it does stop eventually. But at that time, it's hard to change people's minds at this point in the business cycle, okay? It's the same in the business cycle when things are going badly people think it's just going to get worse right things are really bad they're just going to get worse but then usually things pick up so people tend to have kind of herding mentality where they they follow each other and they don't think that analyze the information or think that rationally okay if i looked at the house price or the hotel price in thailand at that time if i think rationally i might say well you know, we're not going to 
to get that much profit to pay this much for the hotel. But I don't think that, right? I think, oh, the last month the price of the hotel went up 5%, so I need to buy it quickly before it goes up more. Okay? So, any more questions? Yes? When the government take, uh, takes actions in that kind of situation, mm -hmm. uh, what is the point of taking that? Because there are many people who have different opinions. Well, it depends on who has the ear of the government, right? We said the bankers, the pensioners, the the uh, exporters. So who's paying the money for the political party, right? In Ireland, we had a problem where the property developers, one political party in Ireland, most of their money came from property developers. Most of their support came from property developers, right? So that government was making very favorable policy for the property industry, like low tax and uh, try to increase the price of the property as much as possible. So that helped to cause the real estate crisis in Ireland. So they had a, they call it, at the horse racing, they had some tent. There was the tent of the political party. Almost everybody in the tent was a property developer or involved in property in some way. So in that case, the government is going to be thinking about property developers, right? So it depends on where, who is the government listening to, where are they getting their funding from, <coughs> who is funding the party, where are they getting their support from. Okay. Are they getting their support from exporting companies? Then they are going to think about exports, right? Are they getting their support from the financial industry, like currently in the UK or Germany, right? Then they are going to think more about the financial industry. What can we do to help the financial industry? Also in the US, the largest funder of the political parties is the financial industry. So. That's why people have some protest in the US. They think the government is not thinking about the unemployed people. The government is thinking about the financial industry. Right? So it depends on, on the country and the situation. Who is, the, who is funding the government? Who is voting for the government? Who is supporting the government? In Korea, what do you think? If I ask you, who do you think the government is worried about in Korea? Chables and export companies, right? For example, in Ireland, the financial industry is, is very important. So usually the government thinks about the financial industry, right? Or the property sector. But at the end of the day, the government is voted for by the people. So if I think about the UK or